When it comes to modifying your charts, like resizing a chart, as we briefly went over in the previous training video, that when you select it, you get the resizing handles, these white squares. When you hover over it, you get arrows pointing in opposite directions. That means that when you click and drag, it goes one direction or the other. So you can stretch this more vertically or hover over the right middle handle to click and drag and stretch it more horizontally. Of course, if you want to keep it in proportion, the height with the width, not have it skewered like that, more horizontal or vertical, hover over the lower right hand corner and then click and drag. But without Excel's help, if I lean more left, it's more vertical and go more up, then it's more horizontal. Hold down the shift key and you can see it pops open the chart. So it keeps it proportional when I, well, try to go too far up or too far down. Then let go of the mouse, let go of the shift key, and there you go. Of course, you can do it numerically if you don't want to freehand it here. Come up here and click on the Format tab, go to the Size group, and there you go. Oh, it's 3.01. I'm anal. Let's type in 3, hit Enter. I can breathe easier now. Of course, when I do that, it doesn't update the width, so it's not keeping it in proportion. If you want to keep it in proportion numerically, then click on its expandable dialog box button so it opens up the task pane and check lock aspect ratio. With it locked, whatever I do to the width or the height, it'll update the other. So if I go smaller, it also shrinks the height as well. I type in 3 and hit enter. We're back to our width here in proportion to the height. And you can do it by percentage as well if you'd like. Let me go ahead and close out of the task pane. Now as far as the chart styles, if you don't like this, you're like, hmm, I'd like to go to a donut chart or a bar chart. Let's see what other options we got. You can either come up here and click on the design tab and go to the type group and click on change chart type or close out. You can right click and in the uh, shortcut menu, there you go, change chart type. Brings up the same window, something 3D. You can go ahead and change it. I want to stay where I'm at, so I'll click cancel. And then, of course, you got the chart style. You can either come up here on the design tab and go to the chart styles and click on more, and then also change the colors if you don't like the current colors, or of course, click on the paintbrush to the icon over to the right. You got style, you got color. Let's go ahead and click off of it. How about data labels? In other words, I don't want to hover over one of the columns to get the exact value because without that, I can't tell exactly where it's at. I could guess is that 599 or exactly 600? You can add data labels by going ahead and right clicking. And when I right click on the blue bar here, notice how it selects all the other blue bars. It selects the entire series for, right there it's cut off, for the legend books. And after it selects the entire series, then I can come down here and say add data labels. Either add labels or call outs. If I go ahead and add data labels, it adds them up at the top here, which is really nice because that way I can know the exact numbers for any one of these or if you'd like we can go ahead and undo that and I'll show you how you can remove it. In fact if you come up here and click on the design tab go to chart layouts click on add chart element and there's your data labels you can go and select none. You can also select them and hit the delete key on the keyboard in any case. After you do that if you just want to focus on one like maybe the top one here after you select the entire data series let me click off and you click on one of the blue columns, it selects all of them here for books, but if you want to focus just on this one, click on it again, and then you can go ahead and add a label just for this column in August. You can right click on it, and say add label, let's do a call out. Ooh, that's fancy, look at that. After you add a label or a call out, you can format it, customize it by clicking on it, and you can click and drag and move it out more. Hey, that's nice. And Hover over one of the resizing handles to click and drag and stretch it out more. And actually click inside of it and drag to select all the text. And then you can go ahead and in the mini formatting toolbar, you know, make it bold, change the size, make it larger so everybody can see, change the color. Or you can right click on the selection and you can change the style here of the shape. Um, also, well, let's choose a style. I like that. That's nice. Or change the color of the fill in, you know, maybe blue. Ugh. And the outline, if you want to change that to some other color like yellow, you can barely see that. Let's do green. There you go. Go ahead and make those options. Of course, let's go ahead and click and drag. And let's go ahead and right click again. You can change the font here, but before you click on font and you make changes to it, make sure you have everything selected that you want to apply the changes to, and then right click and go to font. You can also do underline, strike through, some other effects. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. 
and then to go ahead and remove that if I want then come back up here to the chart layouts click on add chart elements to data labels and say none let's go ahead and do it again right click on all the columns here or when you right click on one column it selects the entire series go down to add data labels let's add data labels and then we can right click on one of the data labels and say we want to format the data labels to bring up the task pane so we get more options now the default is to show it by value and to show leader lines here and you got the leader line there if you want it so when you move it around it you know stays right to it let's go ahead and uncheck that so the leader line disappears which I don't recommend and then the other options that you get well not here but for pie chart you get percentage if you want to go ahead and uh, put in the percentage you can add the series name so it's books well, it gets a little bit tough here with the column chart unless I really stretch it open because look how it overlaps and lays I can of course click on one here and then click and drag to move it out if I want in any case that's an option or you know with it selected hit the delete key on the keyboard and we can click on one delete that one and delete that one so we can just focus on a few and not have all of them being displayed here click on so I can select them all again and then let's go ahead and say center all right well you get the idea outside end works better for me and then of course it resets the one that I had up here except for the original formatting that I had for it where I made it bold and a little bit larger let me go ahead and click again to select it and of course resize it so we can see all of it and you can do it for your column chart you can do it for your line chart you can do it for your pie charts right click add data labels add callouts now if you want to move your chart instead of having it as an object inside a worksheet but to have it on its own worksheet with the chart selected you can come up here on the design tab to the location group click on move chart and you can move it as an object in another sheet well we've got sheet two and three so I can move it over to sheet two and click okie dokie and then give it a second where are you and then if I want to right click on it and say look let's move the chart because you get the option in the shortcut menu with the right click to a new sheet called chart one or called you can type over it click okie dokie you can do that as well and there you go we got my spiffy chart so we got sheet one that has our two embedded charts let me go ahead and scroll over close out of the task pane and then we've got sheet two my spiffy chart now at times when it comes to formatting parts of the chart here like I want to go ahead and select all the callouts or or the pie slices or the legend here or if I go back to sheet one I want to select the um, let me click on the horizontal axis or the vertical axis you can come up here click on the format tab go to the current selection and it tells you what is your current selection it's the vertical value axis well if I select another one down here let me click on that there's the horizontal category X axis but if you can't click on it or you're trying to select something but it's a little bit hard and there are times depending upon your chart where it might be difficult to select an element of the chart then just come up here and click on the drop down arrow and we can do the vertical value access you can see it selected there of course and the series mp3s selects them all there as opposed to us you know clicking on it in any case it depends upon your charts whether or not you may need to go up there on the format tab in the current selection group and make your selection there and then finally if you want to go ahead and add data or remove data from your chart you can either come up here on the design tab and go down to in the data group select data click on it it brings open the window and it says okay the chart data range is right here you can go ahead and click on the collapsible dialog box button and then go ahead and click and drag and select another range and then hit enter to pop it open if you need to update the data range for your chart because maybe you just go ahead and collapse it and just choose the sales and books and say that's all you wanted to see there hit enter and there you go it updates it it doesn't include the mp3s or let's go ahead and click cancel because we don't want it to accept that change you can also right click on the chart and go to select data opens up the same window and you can uncheck it here if you don't want to see mp3s without editing the actual data range so that's temporary click okie dokie and then if you want to bring it back you know right click and select the data then go ahead and check it now in addition to that if you don't want the books to extend down let's say past 
June here, just January through June. Select books, hit edit. There's the name, which is pulling from that cell. Then here's the series. Let's go ahead and uh, delete that. Click on the Classable dialog box button and go down to, well, just to June, right? Let's go ahead and hit enter, pop it open, and there you go. You just have data up and through June here for the books, and then, well, nothing beyond that. Now, you can go ahead and overwrite the series name here if what you have here as books isn't something that you want displayed over here in the chart. But keep in mind, because it has the equals there, it's linked to it. So if I change the name here, it'll update it in the chart. But if I go ahead and overwrite it and type in something else, my spiffy books, oh sure, it'll add the name there when I click okie dokie and click OK again but it's no longer linked to the uh, cell here, which makes sense because if it was, then it would be pulling what you see here over into the chart. And there's my spiffy books. Let me go ahead and undo that. And let's go ahead and undo it a couple of times. So if I come up here and I type in my books, hit enter, because it's linked, it actually updates the chart. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.